presentation was for the Irvine Business Chamber. So um, it was mostly focused around medical because that's what they were had who they had in house. Um, so we are a virtual reality development house. Um, got started years ago uh, when I put on this headset in 2013. I backed a project on Kickstarter called Oculus. Who knows what Oculus is? Raise your hand. Small little Newport Beach company that got bought for 2.1 billion from Facebook, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. Got launched on Facebook. I backed the project before that happened. Headset came in the mail. Mine was blown. And uh, from that, decided to sell my previous business uh, where I was a food truck owner with that lovely, handsome gentleman in the back. Hey. <laughs> and I uh, decided to dedicate uh, to virtual reality. Uh, being a food truck owner, I didn't know anything about VR whatsoever. I, I knew how to make a burger. And so that, that was good. <laughs> but from there, um, decided one of my strengths was with food trucks, we got together in circles and roundups. And we realized the strength of our parts together was not as good as they were divided. So if you have one food truck by himself, it did not work as well as having a bunch in a group. So I formed Orange County VR, a nexus point for developers in Orange County, um, really getting our hands dirty. And so we focused a lot on making things, building stuff, and teaching people how to do the same. From that, we made the dev house, and we kind of cherry-picked the best in the industry that came around to, to work with us. We then made a conference uh, two years ago at Southern at UCI. Uh, we had about 700 people show up, 60 virtual reality exhibitors from San Francisco to San Diego, um, 35 speakers, like um, people from San Diego Zoo, uh, all, all these different speakers on uh, eight different panels, all streamed in 360 video. Um, who knows what 360 video is? Raise your hand. Okay. If you've seen the YouTube videos where you hold up the thing on your phone and you can move around, you can look around on those YouTube videos or on Facebook, those are 360 videos. All that means, it's an array of cameras. You have a camera pointing here, a camera here, a camera here, a camera here, and you take it all at once. And then you stitch it all together and then, boop, you're in the center. And everywhere you look, it feels like you're there. So that's one version of virtual reality. So after that, we played the candy climbing game. And uh, we, we made that, we were one of the first multiplayer experiences inside the first ever VR marketplace uh, for virtual reality called the Steam Marketplace. And uh, that was a couple of years ago. Um, realizing that there was no marketplace and there was no way to make money being an entrepreneur, we pivoted. And what did we pivot to? Well, we started uh, working with Ray Kavaka, Wim and Grant and Sons, their uh, parent brand that's one of the top 10 biggest alcohol companies in the world. And we made a market engagement. So what they did is they brought this to places like uh, uh, Bottle Rock, Arroyo Seco, Fresh Toast, um, and a bunch of other locations where we'd go as a market engagement where two people got to race across all the beautiful parts of Iceland and then got to land on top of a volcano uh, where there was an ice bar and you had to mix an Icelandic meal and chug it. And the first person to do it wins. And the reason being is that uh, they had a unique problem. Uh, anybody who goes to Iceland would connect with the brand. Um, but it's very hard to go to Iceland. Not a lot of people go there, so we brought Iceland to them. <clears throat> and for, since then, we've uh, sent out to New York, Australia, and I believe the UK is now ordinate as well. So how, so how are you monetizing the rate cut thing? They, are they paying you for that? Yeah. But did you know about technology, that a platform with that that you're... Yeah, what we did is we, uh, what's called a, a reskin. <coughs> we took our candy climbing game, and we had this code base, and we just went over it, with uh, uh, vodka bottles and, and the scenery and stuff like that. So we, so we still had the core code base that we worked on for the previous year, but then we just covered it with beautiful new assets, the same way we do with a website or anything else, yep. or a used car. Um, from there, or, Kevin, did... or Kevin Spacey, just get rid of him. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the other thing we did was uh, the University of UCI. Um, I can hop into that one next. They had a, oh, oh I'll show you here. Reykjavik, as you can see, these are some of the different locations, and this is what I mentioned to. Apparently, I'm supposed to go to the slide next. So, this is kind of what it looked like, and if you guys want to learn how to make an Icelandic mule, um, you'll get to, and it's a lot of fun. And you might want to drink afterwards, just saying. Uh, next was a UCI and a partnership with NVIDIA. Uh, UCI had a, a, a problem. They have so much technology. They have a massive campus. They have all these things that they want to show off. They have all these deans they want to introduce you to but you don't get the time. And so with Applied Innovation, their technology hub, wanting to show all this off, having 30,000 people go through the doors, they didn't really have a way to be able to do this in 30 minutes. And so what we did was made a multi-user um, virtual reality tour of the place where you'd go from location to location, so their brand new eSports arena, this gaming eSports arena, where kids now get scholarships to play video games. It's a real thing, and it does happen. 
So from there, they also have a fusion reactor. They have a Beckman Laser Institute. They have a, a medical rehab. But as you go into these different locations, you'd learn about the technology. You'd be greeted by a hologram of the dean, and people could remotely join you inside the environment, being able to show you and give you tours. Good for student acquisitions or to actually increase funds from donors to show you what you're doing. So uh, NVIDIA loved this so much, so we were one of the first three companies, oil and gas, uh, military, and then us, to make this multi-user system. So this is a big server. It's about a big old box this big, and it had four P5000 graphics cards in there. When you start it up, it sounded like Nazis were flying overhead and you had to run for cover. It was so loud. I couldn't believe it. But uh, we took it to the conference. They loved it. What was amazing is, while we, dam while we demoed this right here in San Jose at the San Jose Convention Center, our developers were in this building, building, iterating, and testing as that process was happening. It's pretty neat. So why do we love VR? Um, personal, personal opinion. Uh, people like to communicate. We like to share what's inside here over to other people. And the thing is, you only have so much bandwidth. The first technology was communication with your hands, right? And then you're able to verbalize it, you know, you're trying to grunt, mm, mm, run away, tiger, you know. <laughs> and so that got better and that got more articulate. And so a picture is worth a thousand words. A thousand pictures go into a video. And a video is about this big. You take that video and you wrap it around your head and it's a 360 video. And from that you get more and more data and we're getting better and better at communicating what's inside people's heads from here to other people. So now with the technology and being able to connect with people, you can do it virtually, anywhere, any place, anytime, with anyone. And all that technology leads to connecting people. And that's the power of VR, and that's why we love it. 